What is up everybody and welcome back to my team journey career mode episode 5 and we head to the Spanish Grand Prix later. So in the last race uh, Imola we had a sprint race and we did okay and no, we didn't do okay we did very well actually and then come the race uh, we got taken out by Hamilton which ruined our whole weekend but without further ado let's press on forward and forget about that weekend. So we need to upgrade up some of our facilities, uh, especially quality control. And well, we went for quality control in the end because I wanted the upgrades to um, come in um, without any faults at all, because we've done it with the um, durability, but we've not done it with aerodynamics, which we're going to do eventually. And the same thing applying to um, the chassis and the powertrain. So we've done the chassis one, and we're just doing the powertrain now. And it eventually clicks on. I did think about going about fabrication, but quality control was all I really wanted for the chassis, the powertrain, and the um, uh, aerodynamics. So we press on in time. They've all gone onto the car, not the car. They all gone on in time. Thank goodness. And so pressing through, we got upgrades coming in, hopefully. So like the um, the streamlined suspension that should go on the car, hopefully, along with the upgrades coming on. Yep, that's gone on the car. So that's pretty handy. And so we've got an event to deal with. And uh, about um, having the driver coming to tour on our team. So we did so because we needed the team acclaim to boost up our acclaim level. And so we've got more upgrades coming through and they managed to go on the car in time, thank goodness. So we didn't head into Spain. So I've done all the practice runs, which you don't need to see because I thought it might be a bit dull to um, showcase. So so if all these upgrades have gone onto the car, which is very handy because we do need them to get further up to the grid, hopefully to become a midfield team, a proper midfield team, rather than last of the maestros so I did think about doing another upgrade something engine related maybe if you go on type of Baku so we chose that one and we did some practice programs and we managed to get a good amount of resource points for it on the track which is my least favorite I just wish they changed the last two corners to make it more chances for overtaking which is what we, which is what I hope they do in real life, because they made changes to like one particular part of the track, which doesn't really do anything. So, with all that said and done, God, I really hope they make changes to the track. So we're getting all these like discounts coming through with our with the team, with the team, with the resources points and everything. And they're boosting our claim to like level 9 and then try to see what kind of resource points I can get or resource points so we went for another upgrade to the chassis and the last time I had a gearbox problem so we're changing all the components to make sure that we have fresher ones so we won't have any problems <laughs> come to come to the qualifying and the race because when it comes to qualifying part Ferme begins and we don't want that so we changed the gearbox which we needed, so we don't have any more problems with it. And we're just flicking through, seeing what else we need to do. I try to go for ones that are like above 50% and change them over because I want fresher ones, like I said. So without further ado, let's get straight into qualifying. So we're now in qualifying in Q1 and to see where we're all at and it's going to be raining for the race at some point. So we went on for the first lap and it was a, it was an all right lap. We did a 20, we did a 20 and a half. So I want to see what other times the other teams do. And I did think about going back out there again, but um, the, our time was pretty good enough for 14th place, which was fine. But then. We went, uh, we went into Q2, 
this is our first run in Q2. Uh, we're coming up towards the line now. And we did a 121. We won the 120.1. Four tenths faster than our, than our qualifying, first qualifying lap. And I wanted to see what other teams do. Uh, we were sitting seven for the time being, which is good. But I didn't feel safe. I went to go back out there again because, like I said, I didn't feel like it was quick enough. And we have to do, we just get straight out back out there again. We had the uh, off in front of us, which was really annoying. So by the time we got out there, we were uh, like down in like ninth place, which was dangerous. So we come across the line here and we do ourselves a 119.6, which gets us into Q3, which is amazing. So this is our first qualifying lap of Q3. And we come across the line now, and it's a 120.6. A lot slower compared to what we did in the first run. And so the second run, I wanted to go a bit faster because I feel like there's more in this car. And so we come across the line now, and now, and it's a 19.4. Probably the fastest we've ever done for the whole session of bullet mine, which was really helpful. Really, really helpful. Because we were able to get ourselves into a prime position we scored some points here and we're just up in our rival Alex Albon here which was good I don't know where he qualified Piastri was out in first qualified but he finished 18th that's pretty good I'll take that from him much more improvement than 21st so it's going to be raining at some point in this race so let's get straight into the Grand Prix Welcome along then to what promises to be another fascinating Spanish Grand Prix. It's a race which saw Max Verstappen take victory on his first ever appearance with the Red Bull team in 2016, after that dramatic coming together of Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. Will we see more moments for the scrapbook here today? The Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya, a track that will certainly force the drivers to push themselves. It consists of a very impressive main straight going into turn one. It's a straight that also offers a DRS zone, so it's likely to be a hotspot for overtakes. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Perez, Verstappen, Charles Leclerc, and Norris, Sainz, Phoenix, Fernando Alonso, and Daniel Ricciardo, Bottas, Gasly, Esteban Ocon, and Sonoda, Magnussen, Stroll, Mick Schumacher, and Oscar Piastri, Latifi, Albon, Vettel, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. And Guan Yu Zhou. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. So you've seen some penalties apply for the lower teams down the grid, which didn't affect us at all. So we're starting eighth, and logically I wanted to go on the hard tyre to go longer in this stint because of the rain that's due to come by near to... Near, probably the halfway stage of the Grand Prix or near to the end of the Grand Prix. I don't fully know the max because I'm not really driven around this racetrack in the wet. So this will be an interesting dynamic to add to this uh, Grand Prix. So we're going to be going on the hard tyres and hope and finish on the medium tyres, hopefully. Nice little transition that I've done there. So the formation that begins with George Russell taking first, his first pole position of the season and his in his Mercedes career and for himself as well, with Lewis Hamilton alongside him and all the Red Bulls behind as well but we're just behind Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari and ahead of the Alpine of Fernando Alonso so this is our formation lap here, we almost run into the back of Sainz caught me off guard there slightly we're trying desperately so hard to warn the hard tyres but these hard tyres, they do not switch on very quickly which is a risk, I know but when you've got nothing to lose, you just got to go with it with this um, Race tire as well. So everyone's starting to form up on the grid with George Russell, Lewis Hamilton, Sergio Perez, and Max Verstappen, the top four. And so we slot ourselves into P8 here. Nice and done. Three, uh, three red lights, four red lights, five red lights. And we are underway for the Spanish Grand Prix. We get a decent, we get an okay start, but then we get blocked down by Alonso and Ricardo on our sides. Not ideal. So we're starting to get back on him. We dive on the inside of Lonzo. Ricardo dies upon everyone. So we go a bit wide. 
which is not ideal. Then we're just trying to go backwards. These hard tires are, even though they're warmed up as much as I could, they just do not have the grip of the start. So we're getting absolutely bogged down. Then Pierre Gasly is on our side here. We try and squeeze him around on the inside. He goes on the outside, and he's now going to the inside for this turn here. We go wide. We just managed to keep Pierre Gasly at bay for the time being. Now he's coming straight back at us. We ran wide here, and oh dear, this has been a horrendous start. Pierre Gasly just gets us right here, which is not ideal. Not an ideal start to the Grand Prix at all. So we try to compress on from here. So the yellow flag out front or something. I don't know what that is for. Oh, Sergio Perez is out. It's only been the first lap. Well, that's poor reliability. Well, that must be very annoying. But that called um, Gassy out. We try and go on the outside. And oh, we make contact. We make contact with Bottas. How rude of him. Here's the replay. Yes, Gassy went very broke early. Bottas gets on the inside, taps us. And that allows my teammate, Schumacher, and uh, Ocon to get in front of us. Yuki Sino is alongside us. We go around the out we're around the outside. He's on our he's on our outside as well. We take the inside line. He's side by side with us, and we just managed to stay ahead of Sonoda. Which was like which was handy. And Sonoda makes contact with Kevin Magnuson after locking up. So in a very scoppily first three laps for the midfield teams here. The us included. And uh, at this point I was just trying to get ahead of it, everyone, but he actually goes in too deep and he went wide. He all, we will swing straight in the back of him. So we're going to get a nice run on Piastri. Try to go on the inside here, which didn't work. He comes in, so we're in the outside, which went the long way around. It didn't quite work out. We had to switch a real gear. Now we go straight back on the outside, which was turning to the inside. And that's 13 for us. It's, more of a, it's become more of a recovery drive now. So pressing on forward. We did catch up to Ocon in the end. But is this last segment of the track that they have the ultimate drive? Oscar Piastri is now now going backwards. He's been overtaken by Yuki Tsunoda. Such a shame. Such a real shame. He had a really good start as well. How unfortunate. So we continue pressing on. We're still trying to chase down Mr. Van Ocon. But it is nigh impossible to get close to him. This car is quite evenly matched on this. Um, on this track we break super late here we have was so good on the brakes here but not so good on getting out of the corners as much as we wanted to and that's ultimately down to the driving line that we take which is not a deal rain in 10 minutes well that was spicing things up good job i went on the hard tires everyone else on the medians will start to struggle after uh, maybe uh, after lap 11. There's a bit of squabbling between Bottas and Schumacher, which allows us to get closer to Ocon as he gets blocked, as he gets held up by the squabbling duo up front. But it's not quite there. We get super close to him on multiple occasions. But we just, just can't seem to find a way through. We get good traction out of some corners. But like I said, it's impossible to like, to like follow through a move. As you see, the, lead, the leaders are like driving away at this point. With George Russell leading the brigade ahead of Hamilton and Leclerc and Verstappen, the sole remaining Red Bull. He's got a job to do. He wants to continue leading this championship. So we get a good run on here on Esteban Ocon. We didn't go up, uh, use the factory. But so we break super late. We went straight in the back of him. Thankfully, no damage so far, which was somewhat amazing that nothing happened there. And Sonoda gets a good run. He tries to go on the inside of us. We still have the high ground. We broke super late and almost went in the back of um, Ocon. Almost, but not quite. And this is where we're going to get ourselves a good run on here. But again, Ocon just has that miraculous, amazing like traction to get a away from us on the straight. But we're much closer this time around as Ocon gets held up by Schumacher a lot more. We get good traction. We've been saving up a bit of our battery to so for this straight down here. We try and we're getting a bit closer and getting closer and closer and closer and closer. And we don't know who to dive for on him. We go 
wide, which is not ideal. We didn't get ourselves a track warning, which is not ideal. Still trying to get a momentum on this, but not going. We go down on the inside for this next right hander here. We'll have the inside line. Let's remember we're on the outside. Side by side action here. Trying to give him a good squeeze, and we managed to get ahead of him. Nicely done from us there. Nicely done. So we managed to dispose of off bomb pretty quickly, and we close up to Schumacher quite quickly as well with our regular pace somehow. I think Bottas has got a bit of front wing damage. It's a bit hard to tell because he's quite slow. Maybe it was from the contact wheel. We went super wide here. I'm surprised we didn't get a track warning for that. Talk about the stroke of luck there. So, the majority of the time, we've just been sort of stuck behind these a lot. Talk about being stuck in the Bottas stream. We go right on the inside of uh, Schumacher. He gives us a squeeze. We make contact. Not very good at all. But uh, we lost a bit of momentum there. We're still very close there. We just couldn't find a way past for the time being. We then go on the inside. Schumacher locks up. We're trying to take advantage and he slams the door and he made contact again. Schumacher. Fuck yeah, man. Is this bumper cars or something? So we fast forward in time. And we do catch up to Schumacher pretty quickly. Which was uh, very handy. Uh, like I say, we, we managed to close up on him super quickly. We go a bit wide. And we go straight down here. Bottas goes straight into the pits. So that releases Schumacher. Let's see what kind of pace he has to offer. But uh, he didn't really offer much. Um, he was quite slow in the, on the straight as well. He peels off to the pits, which frees us. So we can now give it a dirty air, which was damaging us badly. And so everyone else is peeling into the pits. We were pressing on. And we get cut the corner again. Oh, we lost the rear! Oh, that was too close to call. But that allowed Alonso to get close up on us. And he's right behind our tail. At this point, I thought, it's inevitable he's going to overtake us. So I didn't really I didn't really fight for this. I just let him go. I would have liked to fight him, but with the rain possibly coming anytime soon, I couldn't risk it. So we decided to follow him, see what pace he has to offer. So that was really annoying for us and here's the replay for what happened we just got straight onto the curb and lost the rear and uh, this was not ideal at all we had a good gap against Alonso he's on board for Alonso for his point of view you could just see us just off the grass and just trying to get back on the on the track with uh, trying to find the momentum as well so we press on trying to stay with Alonso as much as possible and the first boss of rain is on the is on the way which is um, which is expected. Everyone else pitted for like medium from medium size to hard tires. This is why we chose to stay on the the one stop strategy, because as we press forward in time and come to the end of this lap here, the rain started to come down a little bit more. And as my engineer confirmed, the uh, tire the tire choices will have to. Um, came up as we see Ocon coming into the pits for the second time he's on to the intermediate tires and everyone else is starting to peel at the pace including my teammate so this would be a good time to switch to intermediates because the track is starting to get a lot greasier and slippery so we head straight into the pits following Alonso as well and Daniel Ricciardo and, Espat and uh, Pierre Gassi slowly but surely behind us this was a very crucial pit stop for us as we really need to get ahead of the um, of the uh, McLaren of um, Al not Alonso of Ricardo. So we hit straight into the pits. That was a good pit stop for us. I don't know. I can't remember what the time was, but we managed to get a good pit stop. We were able to stay ahead of the McLaren and the Avatari. We were not able to jump Alonso. Sadly, he was just too far ahead of us to mount the jump. And as we get back on track here, it's just absolutely wet. Not ideal at all, but at least we got um, at least there's a good chance that we'll be able to finish in eighth. And I tried super hard to close down Alonso, but he has just too much pace. And with the conditions as they are, it was very hard to stay, keep it on track. Despite the fact that we had traffic control on, I would like to have traffic control on me, but I don't have the skill for that on the controller. Oh dear. So we continue pressing on uh, through this lap here. 
And this is like the last two laps. It started getting wetter and wetter, almost to the point where it was like getting towards the, the use of the wet tire rather than intermediate. But we were able to pull away from Ricardo just about, which was very handy. Because if we made a mistake, he would have been able to be ready to pounce. So we're coming up to the end of this lap here, and it's starting getting a lot wetter, as you can see on here, which was um, not very good at all. But we managed to keep everything on the track, which is um, handy. So you see Max Verstappen coming out the last few corners into the final corner, and he comes through to the final straight and win this and win the Spanish Grand Prix the second time in his career winning on this track. As for us. We managed to finish P8 and ahead of Ricardo, which is pretty good. I will take P8 better than um, P10. From the lows of Imola to the highs of Spain is eighth place and four points. Okay, pick up rubber and bring it home. put up an outstanding fight for the front position today and it's great to see it paid off for them they do so much for the sports that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win so well done to max verstappen for uh, winning the spanish grand prix for the second time round on this racetrack with lewis hamilton second i don't know where george russell ended up he was doing well in this race but then the ring must have pulled him out and i don't know why it's sunny because it was Pretty appalling rain it was. And with Charles Leclerc finishing third. And it's clearly the battle between Verstappen and Leclerc. And with George Russell, he's finished fourth. Such a shame. He was doing well in this Grand Prix. I would take eighth place for us. As for my teammate, he just finished 21st and last. Not good enough. He's going to need to start performing. We'll be able to finish ahead of Alex Albon, which was, which was uh, crucial for the rivalry. But as for PS3, he just needs to up his game. I know we haven't got a good car, but the car is getting slowly better and I'm expecting him to perform more. I know it's early days, but I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. So we're fucking in some cash and uh, the claim levels as well, which is what we need to like um, help boost our team's morale and boost our team's um, levels. And we need the cash flow because we need some money to get. So that was the Grand Prix, everyone. Um, it was um, a bit of a stressful one because we were mostly stuck behind Ocon and mostly just couldn't hardly do anything. Kept following all the other drivers and just stayed in one place. It just became stalemate. Wasn't fun at all. Wasn't fun at all. But as for the other Grump, as for the other drivers, they were all having good fun out there despite the rain. And yeah, that was the Grand Prix. Uh, yeah, and the next one will be uh, Azerbaijan because we're running a short season. Uh, we've elected to skip Monaco because I don't, I don't like Monaco, and no one is. I just cannot bear that track. So that was the Grand Prix, everyone. Uh, I just want to say thank you for um, taking the time to watch my videos and and just um, yeah, just appreciating it a lot because I do want to, I do enjoy doing this a lot more. Uh, I also do Twitch stream as well, so if you want to follow me on Twitch, uh, please follow the link uh, down below in the, in the description. So, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I also on social media, so like I'm on Instagram, so follow me on there as well, and Twitter. So you'll be able to see all sorts of things that I get up to on the um, social media accounts there. I do other videos, like clips from moments that I've, that I've recorded whenever I'm playing the game, of like fails or cool moments or... Well, it's mostly fails at the moment, but uh, it's still early days for my channel, and I continue and I will continue posting more content as soon as I possibly can. But yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, I just want to say again, thank you so much for everything. It does mean the world for everyone watching my video, and please leave a like if you enjoy, it, and please subscribe for more content. And I will be continue to do more of this um, in this week. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, and we'll see you in Azerbaijan.